Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a recap of the entire episode of the CBS All Access original series, Star Trek Picard, season one, episode 10, entitled Et in Arcadia Ego Part Two. It's the final episode of the season. Relax as I give a recap with photos offset to the side. It's all coming up next. It's Bunny. <laughs> Opening scene, we see Narek. He's running back to the cube as quickly as he can, and it's very evident that he's looking for something very specific. We see Elnor, Seven of Nine, and the XBs. They're all trying to get the cube back on track in some way, somehow, if they can reactivate the weapon system. Elnor says to Seven of Nine, the XBs, are they better off dead? Everybody hates them, and they have no home, nowhere to go. And Seven of Nine says, I'm an XB. I don't have a home or anywhere else to go. So should I take a phaser to my head? And Elnor says, no, I'd miss you. Narek continues to navigate himself through the cube, trying not to be noticed. And then all of a sudden we see Rizzo is aboard the cube and finds him. And she's happy to see her brother. And she has a special hiding place and wants to know the status. And he lets her know that I've found all the synthetics. And I know that in order to fight, in order to get what we need, I have to take these grenades and find some way somehow to destroy those orchid-like ships. Soji and Picard speak. Soji wants Picard to realize that Please, Picard, see it from our side. Organics have always told us what to do with our lives. You choose if we live or die. You, Organics, never gave us a choice. And Picard says, please, don't evolve into this monster that the Romulans expect you to be. These beings that you think will be your salvation could annihilate us all. And we see Agnes view from afar the construction of what would give the beam to the unknown. And we see the opening credits of the episode. Meanwhile, Rios and Rafi, they try to figure out this device that's been gifted to them. And Rios tells her, I'm afraid to use this device. What does it do? And Rafi says, Saga, she gave it to me and she said, in order to use it, use your imagination. And I don't know how it works and exactly how it will fix anything. How and what would you need to fix what's going on on the ship? And Rio starts to explain the damage. And there aren't any parts or indications of how to work it. And Rafi says, try to imagine what it needs and how to fix it. Vi visualize it being fixed. And Rios closes his eyes and starts to imagine these things being fixed. And all of a sudden, the device starts the reconstruction and we see that things are slowly mending and working again. And Rafi says, looks like we're working now. I want to hear it. I want to hear those three words. And Rio says, okay, you were right. And as quickly as they start to rejoice that things are starting to roll, they hear a noise and realize that they're not alone. Agnes and Doc, they approach the lab. And Doc says, all of Bruce's work downloads the consciousness to this machine. And this synthetic body should be able to do this. And in a sarcastic tone, he tells Agnes, this is a remarkable part that you're playing for self-sacrifice. But I guess that's something a mother would have to do, isn't it? Agnes coaches herself as to tell herself everything will be okay. You can do this, but I'm not their mother. Rafi and Rios, they see that it's Narek throwing things at the front of the ship, and he's screaming to them, I have grenades, but I don't mean any harm. Look, we can keep fighting or save the universe. They both have their suspicions, but they sit down because they want to know what's going on. And he tells them, they're building something to signal for something to come here. The synthetics have 
they've blocked all communications and they won't let anyone interfere with what they're trying to do. So you trying to get in contact with Picard or anyone there is pretty hard. Romulans believe that synthetic forms, they must be destroyed. Agnes sees that Alton is trying to do something to Saga and wants to know what he's up to. And he tells her he's trying to retrieve Saga's memories into a memento for Arcana, something that her sister can have. She says, well, some of the files that I'm trying to work on, they're encrypted and I can't finish my work. He stops what he's doing and he goes to the other room to help her. And Agnes goes to Saga. And we can tell that she's doing some type of retrieval herself. Elnor sees that Narek, Rios, and Rafi are speaking. And he says, why are we trusting him? His sister killed Hugo. And Narek says, look, there's this story that my ancestors believe that two sisters, they began the start of destruction. And I believe that this is the history, and not even just that, but history will repeat itself. The Romulans and Commodore O are still on their way, and Narek has an idea to go back to the synthetics and act as if he's been captured. They need to get the grenade on the device that will stop the beacon. But, of course, they need to conceal their weapons. And Rios has an idea to disguise the weapon in a soccer ball. Agnes, she goes to Picard to let him know that her behavior has been strange, but it was all a ploy to create some distraction, and I'm busting you out of here. Picard is floored and, and is just shocked to know that it was all just an act. Alton has completed the download to the synthetic, but is interrupted by surveillance, showing him Saga's true death sequence that it was Narek and Arcana all along. Agnes and Picard, they go back to the ship, and Agnes says, the Romulans are so close, and there's no sign of Starfleet. Picard says, we've got to convince the synthetics that this is the wrong decision. And Agnes says, but we only have six minutes and 11 seconds to convince them. How will we do it? And Picard says, just like children, we have to convince them. By example, and Picard is surely up to something. Saga talks to all of her people and briefs everyone and tells them that once the beam is ready, we will send the signal. It will be transmitted and we will all be free. Remember, Alton has seen from the surveillance the truth of what has happened to his daughter. And he says, I want to return this to you. And I see your reason in trying to convince the synthetics. You wanted that emotional jolt to convince them in the decision, to drive them to make the decision to create the beacon. And I didn't teach you such ways. And he deactivates her. After he deactivates her, they scream now. And it's an opportunity for Elnor, Narek, Rafi, and Rios to get this grenade as closest to the beacon as possible. And they're all fighting trying to make this possible. Narek is captured by some of the synthetics and he screams to Soji, please stop. This is our final chance to stop here. Rio sees an opportunity to throw the soccer ball, the grenade to get it to the beam. But unfortunately, Soji captures it. And seeing Narek fuels her even to even more anger to keep going and she throws the grenade far away so it can deactivate away from them. On the cube, Seven of Nine has discovered Rizzo trying to reactivate the weapons access, and they begin hand-to-hand -hand combat. The orchids are released and try to buy some time in defending the planet as the Romulans have now arrived, and the Commodore O has already given the order to destroy. Seven of Nine continue, Rizzo continues to fight tough hand-to-hand -hand combat and Rizzo says what do you have to live for why didn't you take a phaser to your head and seven of nine says because I had to live for this moment and proceeds to kick her down the cube in typical 300 Sparta style and Rizzo falls and she is no more Seven of Nine makes sure that the weapons deactivated are now deactivated. 
Agnes updates Picard and says, after the orchids are destroyed, we still have over 200 Romulan ships and only one of us. Picard says, I'm aware of that, but I'm trying to fly a ship that I haven't had access to and it's been years and I don't know how. The main thing is to keep us alive. And she says, well, that's good strategy. Keep focus on that. But what if we had some type of maneuver, like, like the Picard maneuver? And he says, that was Stargazer, and that was years ago. We would need something to replicate, like something that has a signal of shattered mirrors. And, and, and for that to happen, we need several sensor images, and that needs a lot. I don't know how to do that, and it's against so many ships. Agnes says, you're right. We would need some type of wacky device like a field replicator with neurochromatic interfaces like this. And we see this ripple effect of Agnes's face. And she has figured out how to replicate the ship. Picard wants to make one final attempt to contact Soji and change her mind to stop what she's doing. And he beams a signal to tell her, I have something to give to you that may be a sacrifice to your people. And Soji, with so much anger, would say, well, what would that be? Picard says, my life. Picard out. And we see Soji in shock by what he's just said. Meanwhile, we do see the Romulan ships moving forward. And Commodore O says that to destroy this planet, and move forward. Picard tells Agnes that on his mark, she needs to send the signal so they can see the duplicate images. And despite Picard's plea, Soji moves forward and she reactivates the beacon and it's released. While Commodore O gives the beacon command to destroy the planet, everyone watches as the signal is released. And just as everything seems like there's no hope, we see Starfleet arrive in large numbers and they are ready to fight. On the screen, we see Will Riker give communication to Commodore O and he says, this planet is protected by Starfleet and the Federation. I have the fastest, most powerful ships behind me and all I need is one reason to destroy you but I'll ask you one more time to stand down. But Commodore O says, prepare target systems and prepare to fight. The beam continues and both fleets pause, wondering what the next move will be. And unfortunately at this time, Picard is in pain in the midst of it all. And it's unfortunate that in his status now, that they're in the midst of a dangerous fight. Picard says, I want to speak to Soji just one more time. And Agnes says, in, in your state, how can you? He says, just give me something to keep me going. I have to speak with her. There's something that I must say. And Agnes gives him enough medicine that will give him enough energy to speak. And he beams the signal to talk to her and says, Soji, stop the beacon. Starfleet is here, and so are the Romulans. If we wanted to destroy you, we would have joined them. Show them that you're not the destroyer, the monster that they think you are. And the Federation and the Romulans are seeing this communication between Soji and Picard. And Picard says, I trust you to do what is right. I believe in you. I saved your life so you could save mine. So we're now here together. Let's save each other. Soji thinks about it. And we start to see another life form come through the beam, the, see, the signal that's coming through the beacon. And Soji stops the beacon. On O's team, they tell her they have destroyed the beacon what are your command? And she says, Romulans, stand down. Will tells her that she's made a good choice and that she will be escorted out of this territory. And O tells him that won't be necessary. 
and we see the Romulan fleet go away. And Picard says, Will, how did you? And Will says, when you send an SOS, I asked for a temporary reassignment and I wanted help. I couldn't sit around making pizza while you had all the fun. And Picard says, Will, thank you for always having my back. And Will tells him, I learned from the best. And I trust from now, you have it from here. Picard says, yes, we have it from here. Picard's health is failing and he's close to death. And Soji sees this and beams them back to the planet. And the crew is all distraught and trying to hold him and share whatever time that he has left. And he tells Soji, I wanted you to choose to show you it was your choice. He grabs the face of Elnor and they share words without speaking. And Picard says to Rafi, you were right. And Rafi says, about what? But he can't finish his words and he passes. Seven of nine and Rio share a moment as they grieve. Rio says, I said I'd never do this again, but I'm doing it. That I wouldn't take some mission and have another lead take my heart. But I did it anyway. And Seven of nine says, I said that as well, that I wouldn't do a lot of things. All the emotions, all of the connections that I have, that I felt that I needed to kill because I felt that certain people should die. But when it comes to Picard, there's nothing we could have done to prevent it. Rafi is to the side on her own, mourning as well, and Elnor joins her. And he can't hold back the tears because once again, he's lost Picard. And Rafi, she comforts him as if she were seeing her own son. And she sees this opportunity to behave as a mother and to comfort him as she tells him, cry, let it out, and everything will be okay. Picard awakens in this weird vision or imagery. And he sees Data. And he says, I guess this is a dream. And Data says, yes, Captain. I guess you would call this a dream. Do you have any memory of your death? Were you wearing that when you died? And Ricard says, I I'm dead. Data says, yes, you are. And Picard says, I don't remember. It seems as if all of my thoughts just ended like a sand capsule, just collapsing. I was so furious, Data, when you sacrificed yourself. And Data says, I sacrificed myself as a goal to prolong yours. And you feeling anger in what I did. Do you have any regret of sacrificing your life for Soji and her people? Picard says, I, I understand what you mean. So Data says, imagine how I felt when I sacrificed myself. Picard says, I regret not telling you while you were here that, that I love you. And Data says, this brings me significant data in my memory. Thank you, Captain. And Picard is pleased. Data says, this is a simulation. And before you go, and Picard says, before I go? He says, yes, Captain. And Picard begins to see a light. And Data says, Agnes and Soji were able to simulate your consciousness. And Data requests, Picard, please release my consciousness. And Picard says, so, in other words, let you die. And he says, yes, Captain. I know that humans 
must be able to move on. And staying in this realm of remembrance wouldn't be a good thing. And Picard says, as you wish. Goodbye, Commander. And Data reassures by saying, goodbye, Captain. Picard awakens to see his friends, Soji and Agnes. And with his new breath, he says, am I real? And Soji says, yes, you are. They sit down and they tell him that his brain abnormality is gone. And he's not immortal because they know how he would think about that. And his life expectancy is set to exist as if he never had the abnormality and that he's back and he's okay with his crew and that he has to fulfill a promise to his friend before he can do anything else. There's this small ceremony that Picard has to remember Data and he slowly deletes the consciousness of him. And he knows more than anything that Data more than anything, wanted to have a human experience. And as he's speaking, he's pulling out these deleted consciousness. And we see the imagery of Data slowly deleting and dying and removing every bit of his consciousness. And we see images of him aging and him becoming more immobile as an imagery of Picard is beside him as comfort as he dies. And his dear friend passes away and Data is no more. The crew is back on the ship and Picard sees Soji and says, you found your home and you choose to leave. And so she says, yeah, I'm more cut out for wandering. And now that they lifted the ban on synthetics, I'm ready for travel. And Picard says, me too. Rios gives the look to Picard and says, ready, Admiral? And Picard says that infamous word that we love so much to the stars. Engage. And that is the end of the episode. That concludes season one for Star Trek Picard. Stay tuned for season two. Also look out for more series and television shows that are coming on the channel. So much more. When one show ends, another one takes its place. In the meantime, be sure to check out the playlist and check out some other amazing movies and television shows that I have recapped. And that's not the end, people. There's so much more. Insecure, How to Get Away with Murder, Wu-Tang, and American Saga season two. And there's so much more, people. It doesn't end here. I hope that you enjoyed how I recapped this season. Until next time, make sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And I don't know if you noticed, but I subscribe to whomever subscribes to me. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Until next time, bye.